Hello, and thanks again for joining our podcast series, A Day in the Life of an Ethical Hacker. Today, we have a great interview for you. Joining SIDAX, Tice Harrison, is Busra Turek. She lives in Istanbul, Turkey, and has quickly moved up the ranks in just over a year as a Synac Red Team member. For those new listeners not familiar with Synac, Synac is the most trusted crowdsourced security platform delivering comprehensive and continuous penetration testing. Synac combines the world's most skilled and trusted ethical hackers with AI-enabled technology to create a scalable, effective security solution. We hope you enjoy the interview. Now over to you, Tice. Thanks, Michelle. Good morning and welcome to this episode of A Day in the Life series. I'm really excited to welcome Busra today. Um, Busra joins us from Istanbul. How are you doing? Hi, Tais. Um, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, the weather is good in Istanbul, uh, but quarantine continues. Uh, that's why I am at home. Um, there was a scenic Europe occurring out last, last week. It was a nice event, uh, but I'm a little tired. Uh, so I am at rest right now. Um, so everything is okay. How are you? Good. Great to hear. Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for asking. We've also got pretty nice uh, weather in Amsterdam here. Um, okay. Rusfer, something I love about these interviews is having the chance to speak to the SRT members from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me a little bit about your background? Uh, I'm interested to know where you're from um, and where and what you studied. Yeah, of course. Um, so let me talk about myself. Um, actually, I am from Ankara. My childhood uh, passed here. I studied elementary and high school there. Um, I came to Istanbul for the university. Uh, I studied electronics engineering uh, at Gebze Technical University. Um, my university life lasted four years. After university, I start, started to work in Istanbul. Um, for this reason, I still live in Istanbul. Wow, nice to hear. Um, I've actually never been to Istanbul, but I would like to. Yeah. Um, and so how did you get into cybersecurity and ethical hacking with Synac? Hmm. Uh, I started to be curious about uh, cybersecurity on my third class at university. I was not away from cybersecurity because of the department uh, I was studying. For this reason, I took security lessons at university. I did an internship in in a bank security team. Then in the final year of the, my university, I work part-time in the like, Turkey's cyber security team. Um, I did some projects here uh, when I was an intern, uh, had fun doing this, and uh, I developed faster. I understood that I wanted uh, this job. Then I started to work as a pen tester in Deloitte, Turkey after graduating from university, um, I had the opportunity to pen test uh, many different companies here. Um, therefore, I can say that I have improved myself very much in Deloitte. When I worked at Deloitte, uh, I got to know and uh, like my job more. <laughs> my CNEC story started uh, after I got the OSCP certificate. Um, on. Uh, one of my teammates uh, entered CNEC at that time. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, listen about CNEC and CNEC structure a lot for him. And then at light, I entered the platform in uh, March 2019. Wow, so it's quite an interesting journey, you know, going from pen testing with the, the big sort of corporate companies like Deloitte and then yeah. also working with Synac at the same time. So um, something which a lot of people seem to have is an idea of a hacker as someone who sits in a dark room, <laughs> you know, looking at a black screen, wearing white gloves and a hoodie while they work. Is that true for you? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, when I was a student, I thought it was this way. <laughs> and I, it, it sounded pretty cool to me. Uh, Maybe that's why I may have been more interested. Uh, green text following on a black screen uh, like the Matrix is real. Yeah, like the Matrix. On my <laughs> screen, actually. Sometimes such images can occur while 
using the computer um, because I love to see this on my computer. <laughs> For this reason, some of my friends uh, who are not related to my work uh, can react differently when they see me working. <laughs> I think it sounds cool to people. Also, I like wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I wear it frequently in my daily life. They are really comfy and cozy, aren't they? They <laughs> but, are, yeah. <laughs> but the black room, the white glow is mostly in the movies. I don't have white glows yet. Maybe <laughs> Cynic will give one uh, of them for me. <laughs> some uh, some Cynic branded <laughs> white gloves we could send over, maybe. <laughs> um, so seeing as we are looking at a day in the life of an ethical hacker, how does a typical day as a red team member look like for you? Mm -hmm. um, I don't limit myself by placing certain working hours. Um, I get up like 10 a.m., have breakfast, watch something while having breakfast. Then I am taking my coffee, go to my desk and start working. If there is a new program that day, uh, I start with it first. Or sometimes I play in my head just to look at this program when I'm available. I'm starting to look at that program. Working time is variable um, because it can change if I like that. I like the prog program I look at. Uh, if I started to find bugs, it's more enjoyable and uh, I may want to look more. But I usually spend a long time on the platform. Actually, my routines are not always the same. This was one. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to work at mornings. In those days, I usually rest, take time for myself and work at nights. When I don't want to look at the program, I'm trying to read write-ups, researching different tools, spend more time on personal development. Yeah. I think also personal development is something which a lot of people are doing in uh, quarantine right now. Um, yeah. So on that, what changes or challenges are you facing now that most of us are under shelter in place or, uh, you know, stay at home orders are about? Normally, I was try to travel as much as I can do. So it obviously affects me. Even I visited three different cities before entering the Quarantina and came back from there, entered the quarantina directly. <laughs> That's why there was, a, there was a, a big social gap. My face to face conversation with my friends were restricted. There's also a travel dis disability in Istanbul. Because of that, I can't uh, go to visit my family. Uh, but not much has changed in terms of my job. <laughs> Uh, I was already working remotely and keep working remotely. So there was a no negative situation in terms of work. Apart from that, uh, I tried to find different activities to spend time with myself. <laughs> As a major improvement, uh, I started to take walks slowly. <laughs> That's important as well to, to sort of take longer walks, I guess. Um, yeah, you're allowed to do that in some, some instances with, uh, I think with one or two people from the household. Um, so you work full time remotely. Um, that's something which everyone um, has now had to adjust to given the current situation. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain a successful workflow working from home? Hmm. Many people are working remotely now um, and in fact, we have seen that many jobs uh, can be done remotely during this process. Uh, I think many companies can switch to working remotely in the new orders. Uh, how do I maintain this remote working? Uh, I was a little scared when I left the first job and started working remotely because it's a difficult situation to manage socially. I think the most important factor uh, of being successful in remote work is to like what you do. My job is like a hobby or game for me. So I don't need a lot of motivation to work. I always try to use the advantages of working remotely when I need motivation. 
Um, I travel frequently for this. My computer is with me on my travels. Because I love to work on my travels. This kind of things motivates me. However, motivation main things can change for every person. Because of that, the person who wants to motivate themselves should observe and act accordingly. Of course, working from home is not a business model for everyone. But as I said, um, I think it's, it's, it has a lot of advantages. If these advances are used, success comes uh, automatically. So you are enjoying working remotely? Mm. Uh, As I said, I was really scared at first. Uh, I thought I would get bored of working from home all the time. But then I realized that when I'm working, I also can, I, I can also travel. I can yeah. plan my life comfortably as there's no time constraints on my work. Also, uh, but more by my boyfriends and some of my best friends are working remotely. This was a huge advance and luck for me. We travel both with them. We also work where we go. For example, uh, I, went, I went skiing twice this winter with my friends. Uh, wow. We ski during the day. On some evenings, we opened our computers and worked with a view of snowy mountain. <laughs> I, wow. think, I think the best part is having this freedom. Yeah, that's got to be absolutely incredible. It's got to be such a good setup, being able to uh, ski during the day and work at night, earn yeah. money afterwards. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so do you have any other hobbies or skills that you've picked up during quarantine? <laughs> yes, there is. Um, for example, I have never practiced yoga before and I started yoga in this process. <laughs> a friend of mine who I love, I love very much is on an online yoga class. I doing it myself outside of class day. Also, I attended an online dance class in the past week. I'm learning at different dance moves right now. Other than that, um, I think I develop myself in the kitchen, <laughs> trying different foods. If you look from the good side, I have added a lot of myself. <laughs> that is really interesting to hear. I think a lot of people are trying to pick up different hobbies. Um, <laughs> yoga seems to be popular. I haven't heard learning yeah. dancing before. Yeah. Um, definitely cooking. I think a lot of people are picking up their skills in the kitchen. Um, if we go back to sort of the work focus, you've been an SRT member for over a year now. Do you have a particular vulnerability type that you like to focus on? Mm, yes, there's actually. Um, there are some types of vulnerabilities I like. I'm happier when looking them, at them. Um, and of course, it's even more fun if I find that types type of vulnerabilities. I like to look for access control vulnerabilities because these are both high impact vulnerabilities and finding these vulnerabilities requires some interpretation. I like it more because there are vulnerabilities that I found by adding something from myself, not, not by using a tool. And I think that keeps your skills um, constantly refining them you know constantly improving your own skills and giving your own <laughs> input which is great so how long do you spend at your computer each day hmm. mm, it's actually very variable um, but i spend an average of five hours sometimes i spend a lot of time sometimes it's the day i never turn on computer so average five is good and that's the benefit of working, you know, full time doing something that you enjoy. <laughs> you do it when yeah. you want and when you don't want to, you can just switch off. That's great. Yeah. So you are a level four SRT member already. Uh, what motivates mm -hmm. you most about researching now? Mm -hmm. I like back hunting. <laughs> it's a bit like game for me. That's why I'm happy when I work. And uh, I think Cinex structure is pretty good. Level logic motivates people very much. I recently became level four, but I need a lot of points to be leveled back. Uh, 
collecting these points is my new motivation. After level five, I would like to enter the top 10 list of all the time. <laughs> these are difficult targets, um, but the goal always provides more motivation. Well, it's good to hear that you want to keep moving to level five and then beyond that, having the top 10 there. Um, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, you've been on the Synac platform for over a year now. That's really cool. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years time? Actually, I didn't spend a long time in this industry. I am 25 years old yet. And for now, I want to continue accounting. But uh, there are also different things uh, I want to do. Um, I can do a master's degree. Um, also, I want to teach cybersecurity or ethical hacking at an university. These are uh, things I want to do. There are also a lot of topics that feel like I have to improve myself of, on them. Um, there are some conferences, trainings that I follow. I want to join them. So um, I think I want to be a better equipped hacker in these five years. I love to hear that. It's really interesting to hear <laughs> when SRT members you know, want to develop themselves, but also give back to the community. Like you said, teaching at a university, teaching ethical hacking is, mm -hmm. is something which, you know, gives someone else an opportunity to experience yeah. something that you've also enjoyed. Yeah. You, you clearly enjoy your job. You're very enthusiastic about the benefits of working remotely, um, being a part of the SRT. What advice would you give to other aspiring security researchers? Mm. This industry is popular right now uh, and it will uh, continue to be popular. Um, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot to learn and it's a very enjoyable job. Uh, Scenic is a beautiful platform that offers the opportunity to do just the way you like it. Um, it's a job that uh, requires patience, but I really think people who want to learn can succeed. Um, so my advance will be don't give up and work hard. <laughs> That's what I am doing. <laughs> Great. Um, is there anything else you would like to add before I leave you to carry on with your day, evening? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for this nice conversation. Uh, the series is really beautiful. Uh, there are many SRTs on the same platform. There is an opportunity for us to get to know each other. Um, also, I think it's a useful series for those who want to get uh, into this business. Thank you and Sine. Happy days. Thank you very much, Busha. That was really, really interesting speaking to you and very fun to hear your story. Um, thanks to everyone who listened and I hope that you got something from this. I'm looking forward to our next episode and in the meantime, stay safe and have a nice day.